Number seven, deferred segment creation. Normally, when you create a table, at least one extent is allocated, and it's at least 64K in size, typically. 64K sounds so small, right? We can't even imagine how small it is anymore. 20 years ago, it was considered big. 20 years later, 64K is, is just trivial, tiny. However, a single create table statement might end up creating five, 10, 20 of these extents. Think of partition tables with all of their extents. Think of a table with a primary key, at least one extent for the table and one for the primary key index. Think of a table with a large object, one extent for the table, one for the lob index, one for the lob segment. Now do that for a thousand tables or thousands of tables, as many third-party applications do, and then discover that only a hundred of them or so are ever used. So you have lots of extents allocated that nobody ever touches. It tends to clutter up your data dictionary, makes it hard to interpret the results on a screen because you have thousands of extents, thousands of segments that nobody's ever using. It'd be nice if we didn't have to have them there. That's what this allows us to do. When you issue a create table statement, no segments are allocated. That is postponed until someone actually inserts data into the table, then we'll create it. So in way of example, I turned off this feature. This feature can be controlled either at the system level as an init.ora parameter, or it can be done session by session as I'm doing here, or it can actually be done create statement by create statement. So there's syntax for doing this on the create itself. But here I turned it off. And I create what looks like a really small table, but when I look in the data dictionary, I can see that it actually created five extents. One for the table, one for the primary key, one for the unique constraint, and two more for the large object. If I do a similar create table, all I did was change T1 to T2 everywhere, but I have deferred segment creation equal true enabled, the data dictionary doesn't change because all we did was put the metadata for the table in the dictionary. We did not allocate any storage. It's not until I do the first insert that all of a sudden all of those extents pop out and appear for the first time. This capability will make large create scripts run a lot faster. They're doing a lot less work. But on the flip side, it's going to make the first insert do a little bit more work than it used to. The first insert's going to work more like the hundredth insert does. You know, initially, the first insert always inserted into an empty table with allocated storage. It wasn't until you inserted a couple hundred rows that we'd have to allocate a next extent and do this work. Now we're going to be allocating the next extent the very first time around. Number eight, a flash cache. Before I discuss this, I do want to point out the flash cache is a feature only on two operating systems right now. Uh, it's Oracle Enterprise Linux and the Sun platform. So only on these two platforms is this capability currently available. What this is, is the ability to go out, get a relatively inexpensive solid state disk drive. They're pretty fast for reads. They're not so fast for writes they're a little bit unreliable unless you pay a lot of money for them. And they can only be written to so many times before they start to fail at this point in time. So the, the way the technology is right now, extremely fast for reads, adequate for writes, not as reliable as we'd like for our permanent storage. Again, unless you buy a really high-end system from somebody who just makes solid disk drives for a database. This is more like something you could go out to Best Buy and pick up off the shelf. So you have these solid state disk drives which are measured in hundreds of gigabytes. We would like to use that to buffer or cache information for the database. This is a cheap way to extend your SGA. If you look at your database organization today, on disk you have hundreds to thousands of gigabytes of stuff to, to query, to, to read. Your buffer caches, your SGAs, are measured in tens of gigabytes. 
as compared to 15 years ago when they were measured in single digit megabytes, you know, 16 gigabytes 15 years ago would have been enormous. Today, 16 gigabytes is sort of like the bare minimum a lot of people start with. But 16, 32, 64 gigabytes in an SGA is pretty common. But the SGA is measured in tens of gigabytes, the database in hundreds or thousands. Solid state test drives are measured in hundreds to thousands of gigabytes themselves, typically hundreds of gigabytes. So we've got a system that's got this configured. Lots on disk, 16 gig SGA, 120 gigabyte flash cache. The very first time you do an I.O., it's not in memory and it's not going to be in the flash cache. So let's just say we started this database up and we run a query. We're going to have to read that into the buffer cache. Eventually, the buffer cache fills up, and DB writer has to do step number two, which is take blocks from the cache and put them back on disk. And usually, this is the end of the story. It puts the block back on disk, and if you need it again, you would read it into the cache, and then write it back out, and then read it back in. In a transactional system, you would do a lot of these IOs over and over and over again, because you're doing lots of single block IOs through indexes. And so we would spend a lot of time paging your database in and out of the SGA. With the flash cache, when DB Writer writes the dirty block to disk, it's going to do a parallel write of that information to the flash cache as well. The disk is where we really care about it. That's the persistent area. The flash cache is going to make subsequent IOs of that block faster. The next time we have to read that database block while this instance is up, we're not going to read it from disk. We're going to read it out of the flash cache. Some metrics, some numbers. Getting a block out of a buffer cache might be as much as 100 times faster than getting it off of disk as far as latencies go. Getting the block out of the flash cache is not going to be as fast as getting it out of the SGA. It can't be because we're doing extra work but it should be about 20 to 30 times faster than getting it off of disk. So this is an, a way to extend your SGA to make reads faster ultimately. The longer your database runs, the faster it will run because the more of the warm data, the data you read and reread frequently will be in that flash cache. If I was to shut down this database instance now, the SGA would disappear and for all intents and purposes, the data in the flash cache would disappear as well. Because if we lose the SGA, we lose the pointers into the flash cache. They're, they're totally kept in memory. But that's OK, because all of our data is safely on disk, first and foremost. That's where the real stuff is. The next one, number nine, parallel improved. Earlier this morning, I know it feels like five days ago, but it really was this morning that I was talking. Uh, I talked about parallel query and how things had changed over time, and, and how way back in version 716, when parallel query was first introduced, 100 gigabytes was considered to be a large Oracle database. It was version 716 where we set up the basic algorithms for parallel query. And they have remained fundamentally unchanged since approximately 1994, 1995. Lots of enhancements, lots of minor changes, but they're fundamentally the same. They've introduced three new things in 11G Release 2 that have sort of changed the way parallel query works a lot. In 1994, version 716, a large machine might have 32 megabytes of memory you'd give like 25 megabytes to the Oracle instance. It might have two or four CPUs. Two or four CPUs running much slower than the CPUs in this laptop. You know, the, the speed of the CPU is really slow. And they'd have sufficient disk to store everything. Parallel query was invented back then to allow a single individual to utilize all the resources on these slow machines to execute a single query in parallel. 